um, I'm looking for a tool to empower people in the area of learning, or, or a set of tools, not just one. Um, and the first thing that I've been um, finding as I look into this is that really um, the way technology has been used in education has been like any new technology to do more of the same. So um, like when Edison invented moving pictures, uh, they initially put a tripod on, a, on the stage and photographed a play and then played it back in another town and they got sort of more of what they were doing but a little bit better because they could take it from one town to another. They had portable plays. And what we're doing mostly in education with technology is more of the same where the same is a, a model, sort of the assembly line model of transferring knowledge, I won't even grace it with that, transferring information from uh, one person's mind to another. And um, so when we start applying computers to uh, this model, you end up either with a very judgmental form, a lot of the, the very first uses of computer were like, com they called it computer-aided instruction, and I think of it as sort of drill and kill. Um, <laughs> wrong answer stuff. Uh, you can go from that to a less judgmental form and less of a push from the computer and more of a pull from the student in um, multimedia encyclopedia, browse the world of knowledge at your fingertips. And that's fine, but it's still the same paradigm. The paradigm is delivering information rather than empowering learning. And uh, so I'd like to draw an analogy. Um, supposing this was a time before the word processor had been invented, but books were around, and you were trying to, um, trying to discover a word processor. There's a big difference between a book and a word processor, that a book is a piece of content written from a given perspective, and a word processor is itself a content-free tool to empower someone in the act of writing. So what, just as a telephone is a content-free tool to empower someone in the act of communication, um, what would a tool for learning look like that empowers someone in the process of learning as opposed to delivering content? And I, I, um, I want to say that there's nothing wrong with delivering information, and I, I, I like multimedia. Um, it's just, uh, it, and I like books too. But I, word processors and books do different jobs, and I think that our, our use of computers are still stuck in the, f the first use, which is more like delivering books. And I'd like to see, it, see them progress into actually empowering people as they're in the process of um, learning. Um, so I've gone around to a number of schools. I've been visiting schools and reading a lot of books. And, meeting with Alan, who's been coaching me and feeding me books to read, and um, we have a lot of talks. And um, I've attached myself to one particular school where um, I hang around and teach a few classes and uh, develop relationships with kids and watch what's going on um, and get to watch some excellent teachers. Uh, this is Nueva Le Learning Center in uh, Hillsboro. Um, when I read uh, one of the books that uh, Alan steered my way was uh, Richard uh, Werman's Information Anxiety. And in there, he said something about interest preceding learning, that you can't learn something unless you're interested in it, that interest has to come first. It's not, and it's not just a matter of it's harder to learn, it's that it doesn't really happen otherwise. Um, and so I, I've been thinking about ways to nurture interest um, one way is providing access where there is already an ex in interest. Like if a child's interested in cars, for God's sake, get him out to an assembly line and let him watch cars being made, and he'll, his mind will go crazy from there. He'll um, branch out many different ways. A different way of empowering or um, nurturing an interest is actually instilling new interests that weren't there before. And when I talk to a lot of people about um, their experiences with learning and education, many people say, well, there were a few great teachers that really made a difference in my life. 
And I say, okay, well, let's get specific. How? What happened? And usually what it boils down to is that those teachers were themselves passionate about a particular area, entered into a relationship with a child, or adult, as a matter of fact, um, such that that person, the student, became passionate themselves, absorbed a passion from their teacher, and that gave them the motivation to learn uh, much more, um, oftentimes beyond what the teacher um, had known. So a second way to nurture an interest is actually to instill interest through, through absorption of passion. Um, it seems to me, well, um, yesterday um, I heard Nicholas Negroponte say a real, a real important thing about television, you know, while we're getting wrapped up in the image quality here and can we make the image sharper and, and uh, nicer, the real problem with television isn't the definition. It's the, the programming, the, the content. The inane content on television is really much more fundamental problem than whether it's a little sharper or not. And I think there's a parallel in what we're trying to do in using technologies in learning. And um, in the middle of uh, all of this stuff about um, delivering information better, how am I doing on time? A little worried. Okay. In the middle of all this stuff about using technologies to deliver information better, I think we're missing the, that, that isn't what's the problem with learning. It's the problem is motivation. The kids aren't there. There's nothing at stake here. They're not called to action to be there, and this doesn't mean anything to them. Uh, you can doll up the information in ways that are more entertaining and require you to require um, sort of less of your personal commitment. But when you go back to what it is that makes people tick, there are two really important drives that people have, children as well as adults. They have, an, uh, they have a drive to be strong and powerful and independent, to grow up and, and become full members of the society. They have another just as important drive, which is to make a difference, to contribute, to give and take in a harmony with something bigger than themselves. And to motivate children, you really need to take them out of an artificial environment constructed for the purposes of education. This, these little exercises for the purpose of learning are just that. And they're worth as much as a gold star. And the kids are right to not do anything for gold stars. So what's needed is a way to actively engage children in doing something that makes a difference, whether they succeed at it or not. Let me give you an example. I, I talked to, um, a, 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 I think, one of the deans at um, Duke Medical. And he said, um, the first two years uh, when the medical students come in, they're doing basically book learning. Um, more, more of what they've been doing in grad school. And there's a certain set of them that rise to the top, become the excellent students there. In the third year, they are out on the wards with real patients, and it makes a difference what they've learned and what they can do. They lose some patients, they're able to help some patients, and it suddenly, it, uh, they get a whole different perspective on this. The fourth year, they're back to some book learning, and oftentimes, the ones that were the, the excellent students, they either fall down or go into research or get out of this business. And some that were rather mediocre become really motivated because there's something at stake for them. They know what they're doing this for. When you've got something at stake that you're committed to contributing and that you feel needed for, it matters if I am up there to do this, then you can pull whatever you need to do, whatever you, whatever, whoever you need to be and whatever you need to learn in order to be that, you, you pull that out of wherever you can get it. If it isn't in multimedia form, you get it from the library. If you can't find it in the library, you find out who's working in that field and you go hang out on their doorstep and, and bug them till they teach you what they know. That 
the real problem in learning is setting up a situation where what you learn matters enough to call you to action to pull it out of whatever form it's in. So um, how do you make tools to nurture um, learning, to, to foster learning? It starts, starts to be that you have to make tools to, um, and I don't have an answer to that. I'm not like saying I got the answer, but I'm looking for it. These are some insights that I've had that are directing me toward um, making tools to empower people in relationships and empower um, a person to sort through what's important to themselves. Why are they, what do they get up for in the morning? Because that's what's really missing in our schools is why am I at school? You know, most of the kids are there under duress, under coercion, and they're not being empowered, um, they're being manipulated. And, uh, and the teachers are just as much trapped in the system, too. I'm not at all pointing at teachers or the administration. It's the whole notion here um, that transferring information is what brings about learning. And I, I, I think we have to get toward um, that being called to action to do something that you consider important enough um, to be living for is what calls people to learn anything uh, and gives them the... the motivation to learn anything. Um, watching Mary Laycock at the Nueva Center for Learning. This is a 75-year-old math teacher who's been teaching math for 52 years. Um, and she's great. Mary uses um, hundreds, literally hundreds of different kinds of manipulative. She's not stuck on any particular kind. And it isn't the toys or tools themselves. It's what she does with them and how she relates with the children that allow the children to understand at a much earlier level and a much deeper level of understanding to where they actually enjoy mathematics. This is, it, it's not something that belongs to school. It's something that's part of life. And they see the connection that this is real, that this gives them power in living, not just it allows them to get a gold star. And so I'm... Um, I'm looking for ways, I don't know how to put this in a computer. And I don't know how to put Mary in a computer. She said herself, she says, I'm 75 years old and I've never backed up my hard disk. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking for ways to back up Mary's hard disk. 